friends. So this time I would like to present a second tool. That is the name is Comin. That also we have developed with Martin Moporius. That is for mining instances of code changes. Okay. So what is Comin? Comin came from Comin mining. So it has two main users. The third one is to compute fine-grained changes between two consecutive uh, revisions. And the second goal is to mine instances of code change. For instance, I want to get all the commits that introduce an if and a return. Okay? Each commit will be an instance or will have an instance of this change pattern. And also, I will, one thing that Comin also provides is to compute the frequencies of code changes. Okay? For instance, it returns the number of commits that add, uh, for instance, a return null. Okay? This is the goal. So why we create a uh, Comin? So with two goals. The first one really was to study software evolution. And the second one was to support our research about automatic software repair that I present during the morning. So, to study the software evolution, we wanted to know how an application evolves during the lifetime, it's a life cycle. In particular, we wanted to know how developers repair bugs. For instance, the probability of changes, which are the commit that introduce bug fixes, which probability are to, for instance, doing some kind of changes, etc. And the second one, so the, the state of the art about this uh, software evolution, the study of software evolution was when we started doing coming, there were one uh, tool that was Evolizer that was basically was a data database that store all the changes from a Git repository. It was a relational database, and all the changes were computed with an algorithm, and also was the tool that the name is Change Distiller. But the problem that we found in that time was that the code change that Change Distiller provides was too coarse grain level. For instance, one of the output of change distiller was update of method invocation. Imagine that you have this change, and change distiller say, okay, here you have an update of the method invocation. That is right. But actually the change was, it changed the argument, the parameter. So it's too constrained. So actually we wanted to say, okay, here we have an update of the first argument in the method invocation. That this is final grain change. So, the second part of our research was to supporting our research about uh, automatic software repair. So, we need bugs. And we need bugs for repairing, for testing our tools, as Astor, that one that I present before. So, to evaluate automatic software repair tools, we need buggy revisions to apply our repair approaches and the patcher version, okay? Why we need the patcher version? Because we need to know which is the patch that the developer has written to repair the bug, okay? And then with this patcher version, we can compare our results, that, uh, that means our patches that were automatically generated, with those ones that the developer has created. So the goal is we wanted to mine buggy revision and patch revisions with our tool coming. For instance, at that time we present an automatic repair system that the name is Nopol. The idea of Nopol is was to repair if conditions. Imagine that you have a bug in, in one condition inside the if. And also to add missing preconditions. Okay? These were, are the diffs that are able, or the kind of patches that Nopal system are able to repair, to uh, generate. 
So when we wanted to evaluate Nopal, we wanted to mine real programs, real, com real instances of programs that cause this kind of bugs. So we use mining to finding commits that introduce a change inside an if conditions or to add an if per condition. We also wanted that the commit was uh, the commit message, sorry, include some keywords, for instance, a link to uh, a report. And also we wanted to get those commits that introduce, obviously, the, the if condition change, that means the patch or the precondition, that change the, the message, and also that introduce a change in the test cases. Why this? Because we wanted to, to know whether the test cases were updated according when the patch is introduced. Okay? So how coming works? So the inputs are two. One can be the Git repository that we want to mine, to mine, okay, to, to, to analyze. And optionally, we, we have uh, another format that is that to, to include one folder with pairs of files, okay? For instance, one of the, one of the file of the pair is the buggy version and the other is the patch. That means that if you want, you don't have the, the information to analyze in a Git repository, repository you can, and a, w coming is able to analyze uh, part, um, pairs of, um, of files. In this talk, I, I will suppose that we analyze git commit. So this is the workflow. For each commit, first we apply some filters, hmm, according, for instance, to the number of file modifier, the number of hunks that each file introduces, the size of the hunks in number of line of codes, the presence of keywords in the commits, etc. So we apply the filters and then we decide whether we accept the commit or not. If we accept the commit, then we analyze each file that was modifier by the commit. Okay, we call it file commit. And then for each file, we generate the AST representation of the modifier file that we call F and the previous version, okay? So given a file, we compute the AST. And here we know that there are different ways to create this AST. That means that each node can correspond to different granularities. For instance, the algorithm that I mentioned before Chain distiller use AST that are, the nodes are very coarse level. That means that, um, for instance, the, the invocation they have all the information about the method invocation inside one node. Okay. And another representation of AST, for instance, Eclipse JDT was two fan grain, fine, two fan grain level. There were a lot of nodes with not much information. So we decide to work at the level of the meta model of Spoon. Spoon is a tool, it's a library, for analyze, transform, a uh, write code in Java. Mm -hmm. This is a meta model. So we wanted to create AST with that level of granularity. Does that mean that given a file, we use Spoon to create an AST where each node is an element from the spoon meta model okay so once that so the difference is that the spoon granularity is much finer than the chain distiller but is a bit more coarse level than the JDT that allows us to have more compact AST so once that we have the two AST, one from the previous version of the file modifier by the commit and the file from the commit, we compute the differences. 
between these two EST. So for computing the the differences, so we, we have the two AST and we apply an algorithm that compares the two AST and marks the change that the, 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 the nodes that have, have been changed, remove, update, or move. We use the algorithm that we have developed, that is the name is GAM3. GAM3 has two inputs, uh, sorry, as input two three, okay? And the output is a list of operations. And each operation is associated to one node. Okay? The operations available are insert, remove, update, and move. Okay, once that we have the result given by change distiller, that means the differences between the two AST, we want to know whether these changes has an instance of a code pattern, okay? So, in common we have defined the concept of change pattern, that change pattern define a set of changes between two files, okay? So, a change pattern has one or more pattern action. That means that a pattern action describe one particular change. For instance, one insert, one remove, okay? And one pattern action has the type of actions that are those that came from uh, Gumtree, insert, move, remove, update. A pattern entity that is the description of the code element that is affected by the change. This pattern entity has three properties. One is the type. For instance, the type of the element is a return, an, an if, an while, an expression, a parameter, etc. The value, okay, for instance, a parameter that the name is uh, my parameter or my method call, etc. Return null. And the parent, that is a reference to another parent identity, okay? For instance, here, with, with this parent, we can say, okay, I want to detect all the changes, all the method invocations that are inside an if condition, okay? Here we'll say that the parent allowed to express the entity that is affect and the parent. So, commit provides an option to create this change pattern that is using XML. Here we have a, a small example of this XML. Here I want, uh, I want to detect, using this pattern, all the changes, all the commits that introduce one if, and inside the if, one return, okay? So, the first part of the XML represent, has uh, one tag, that is entity, that represents to the return, and the ID of these entities the ID one. Then we represent another entity that is ID two, that is the if. Then we represent the parent. Uh, we say that the return has a parent that is the if, and we here we relate with the ID. And then we say, okay, I want that one action that is one insert that affect to the entity ID one, that is the return and another insert that affects to the ID two, that is the return. So this way is how we represent a change pattern. So once that we have a change pattern a specification in XML and we have the change between two AST produced by Gumtree, we will match both, to get the instances. So imagine that we have the previous uh, change specification. Imagine that we have this diff, okay? That it adds an if precondition. Hmm? So the EST changes of this snippet are insert an if in a meton body, 
let's imagine that, and a move operation of the of the call here because we change the parent of the method invocation call. So change uh, treat say okay, there is a move of this method invocation. Here, coming is able to match the first action, that means the insert of the if, but we are not able to detect the move. Okay, because here the, the, the pattern say, okay, uh, I need an insert of a return. So here is the case that there is not a matching. Okay? However, if you have another snipper, for instance here, and add if and inside the uh, uh, other return, here we are able to get from these AST changes, that means one AST changes is the if method and insert a return, inside the if we will have, we are able to match these instances. So that means that coming will present this snippet, this change, as an instance of this pattern, okay? Here I present some examples of other specifications. For instance, here we, we use the value. That means that the, we want to match a node which value is return null, for instance. Or we, can, we can match the value of one variable, one method invocation, etc. Here another example with more than two entities. We want to, to match three entities that change. Okay. And the output is a JSON file with the revision that has an instance, the name of the pattern, and more information, for instance, where is the instance inside the, uh, the, co the commit, okay? How to use commit? So we have the location, in this case, the location of the Git project, okay? Then we specify the mode, the execution mode, here my instances, there are some arguments for mining a single change pattern. For instance, we, we can use the, the argument action to say, okay, I want insert and the action uh, and the argument entity type to say, okay, the name of the entity type that we want to, to match. For instance, if, method invocation, return, etc. And here the output where coming will write the output. Another use, for instance here, I have an example where we say, okay, give me all the commits that, in, that has an update of a literal. We don't care about which is the literal that we want to change, we only specify the type. And here we can also specify some filters, for instance, the number of hunks, um, the max number of provision that we want, the size of the hunks, the, num the max number of files per commit, etc. There are, we have a lot of filters that are, are documented in, in our Git uh, space. And finally, another example that we can specify, specify the file of the pattern, uh, the, the, the file that contains the pattern that we want to mine, for instance, the pattern that we have seen before, okay? So, the second option is to, is the mode div that produce as output all the, so, the, it computes a JSON that computes the frequency of the changes, okay? For instance, it say, okay, here you have binary oper operator that we found six changes that affect two binary operators. We have found two changes that affect invocation, etc. Come and produce this information at different level of granularities. For instance, here it say, okay, we found two instance of invocation, insert of invocations inside the block. We find two instance of update of a binary operator inside an if, etc. So they, they show the, the information at the different level of granularities. So coming also provide extension point. 
to um, extend the, the behavior. In particular, we can specify the input. Right now, we have two kinds of inputs, git repository or file systems. That means pairs of files. We can add new revision filters. With the filters that we have right now are related with the commit message, the size of the commit, etc. We can add new analyzers. For instance, another AST uh, algorithm, uh, a, a new uh, granular, a new AST with different granularity, a new technique for pattern detections. And we can also add new output processor. Right now, the output is present in the standard output or in JSON files, but we can generate another kind of output. For the evaluation, so we have analyzed different commits from the data set different for shape, and we evaluate whether Coming was able to detect different instances of change pattern related with if. So most of them were uh, detected. We have two cases of false negatives that actually was related with the output of the AST diff algorithm. Sometimes it does happen that the diff produce by GAM3 was too complex with a lot of changes. And the changes were not as we expect. So that's why we are not able to detect the pattern given such um, output from GAM3. So to sum up, we found 26 out of 28 pattern instances that all were true positives. And, and actually, for some cases, Comey was able to find more than one instance of the same pattern inside the same file. So future work, we are working right now in adding new, dif new different inputs and filters, improving the specification that right now is quite simple, but we want to, to know more features inside, and improving the, the outputs. It's available on GitHub. So if you want to, to use it, so we have there the instruction how to extend it, how, some examples also. So conclusions. Coming is a tool for analyzing fine-grained changes between uh, two revisions. So it allows to mine instances of code changes that were specified in XML languages. It exports the result in JSON format. Um, the code is publicly available, so we, we welcome pull requests, comments, etc. Okay, that's all. Thanks a lot. So uh, his question was, if we mine the source code or the bytecode. So we mine the source code. So we take a version from, uh, from a commit. We take the source code. And then we mine the changes between the version of the commit and the previous one. But the code, the code source. Okay, his question was whether if we use some machine learning technique for generating the, pat the patterns. 
It's a nice question. We haven't do that for, because for the moment we only wanted to get instances for particular patterns. For instance, uh, the pattern that I show add an if, uh, an, an if precondition or add an if return because we need it for evaluation of repair approaches. But we, we can plug, the idea is to plug machine learning techniques to get these uh, patterns uh, automatically. Yes? Um, have you heard of uh, other research uh, similar to yours that applied to other languages? Apply to another language? Yes. No. So I know all the. Ah, uh, yes. So his question was if there is some research related with uh, similar research related with another languages. Um, from my knowledge, I, I, I don't know any tool that detects instances of change pattern for another languages. But actually, it, with coming, it could be easily done, but changing the AST uh, generator. So that means the parser, you can parse another file in another language, and instead of generating, uh, so we generate the same AST, but using another parser. And then it, it, is, it will be the same. So the, the matching part will be the same, so it's, it will be similar. Any other questions? Okay, good. Thank you very much. Thanks.